So yesterday, Valve announced the Steam Deck. It's a new console coming out, and it's going to be running Linux. And they have three different models that you can choose from. There's one that's got 64 gigabytes. You got the $529 one with 256 and 512. And they come with a few different things. And this video, we're going to kind of break down what you get and kind of what maybe the performance might be like. So if you just get the 64 gigabyte right off the bat, you get just a carrying case and you get the console. After that, you'll get, uh, if you bump up to the 256, you'll get the faster storage. So EMMC is a slower storage versus NVMe is going to be a lot faster uh, depending on the speed you could probably see maybe 20 20 times faster speeds on the NVMe depending on how slow they make the EMMC because EMMC typically is very very slow um, but if you do get the NVMe in the 256 uh, you also get a carrying case, so probably the same one, and you get a community profile bundle. Next, you get an even faster EM NVMe with the 512, and you get a premium anti-glare screen, I'm assuming. It just says premium anti-glare etched glass, and it says exclusive carrying case, probably a little bit better than, than the other two and you get the community profile bundle and you get a virtual keyboard theme which not they're not really descriptive on what that will look like but that's what you get and they can all use a micro sd card to expand the storage so if you want to add in extra games you could do it on the micro sd card might be a little slow though because micro sd cards read at 100 megabytes per second or 140 megabytes per second so they're probably not going to load that fast off an SD card, especially if you're loading up like a 100 gigabyte game like Doom. But if we keep scrolling down, you see there's the portability meets power. Partner with AMD to create Steam Deck's custom APU. This is running Zen 2 and RDNA 2. And if we keep going down... Pretty much it there's going to be a dock but it's going to be sold separately but yeah there's not uh it's not a whole ton that's um that's really here but then let's see powerful comfortable versatile it's all marketing stuff um but yeah so as you can see they're showing a bunch of windows games and it's they don't really explain how they're doing it, but Control and Doom and Hades and a lot of these games are actually Windows games, and they're actually getting Windows games to run on this Steam Deck, which is going to be running Linux. And I was able to do some digging and found that it's actually going to be using something called Proton. And Proton what it does is it basically emulates it emulates windows um, and it's using wine which transfers windows system it's basically system calls or system language and converts it into something that a linux um, computer can actually read and and do stuff with and then it's going to use, um, of course, Vulkan, which is made by AMD, and Vulkan's also going to power that. So it's a mixture from what Wikipedia is showing. It's going to be, it's going to be running. Pro, it's Proton. Proton is made, of course, by Valve, and it's using Wine, which is right here. Wine is not an emulator, it's an open source compatibility layer. Uh, 
to allow application and computer games developed by Microsoft Windows to run on Unix-like operating system, Unix slash Linux uh, operating system. So that's one of the layers. And then if you know, you take a look at DXVK, it's a Vulkan transition transition layer for the graphics. Uh, so it's going to be using Direct3D 9, 10, 11, which allows running 3D applications on Linux using Wine. So they basically, with this Proton thing, they've made their own compat compatibility layer so you're able to run the games. So I was able to find all this out digging a little bit. So that's what's that's that that's what's gonna be there for game compatibility. But looking at Proton DB, this is what's actually already working. So games that work is about fifteen thousand games, which is a lot of games that will be compatible or at least work. And you know, they already got The Witcher, they got Skyrim, they got Dishonored. They got a bunch of games that are already good to go. Um, same with Metal Gear Solid, uh, Deus Ex. So these are gonna run. And if we go and we take a look, I was able to find the teraflops, teraflops of the console. So you can see um, these are the given teraflops. Uh, teraflop basically is how much how much compute power does a console's um, graphics what's the console's graphics capability and so if we look at the switch it's half a teraflop xbox one the first xbox one 1.3 and the one s was a little bit faster at 1.4 you have the Steam Deck, which is faster than Xbox One S. It's a little slower than the PS4 that comes in at 1.84, but the, you see there's a big difference. The Xbox Series S is already way above at four teraflops. So basically the Steam Deck is almost like halfway between an Xbox One S and a PlayStation 4. And uh, we can see it better here. It's it's going to be very close. It's going to be very close to the PlayStation 4. And uh, yeah, this is the last one. This is just bringing out all the current gen, all the current gen systems. So you got the Switch, which again is half a teraflop, and you got the Steam Deck. But then you see as we go up, the PS4 is 4.2. PS4 Pro is 4.2, um, 4.2 teraflops. And then you got the series or Xbox One X, which is six. And then you got the PS5 at 10.28. And then the Series X is all the way up at 12. So if you're really looking for the most gaming performance for the price, you could probably want to get a PlayStation 5 or an Xbox Series X if you're looking at that compute power in terms of teraflops but the steam deck is actually pretty cool because you're basically getting a portable xbox one s or playstation 4 uh pretty much so that's that's what's there for the that's what's there for the uh compute side of things and so what else do we got here? Not a whole lot. I mean, you know, standard A, B, X, Y, you got dual thumbsticks, you got a steam button, you got a D pad, and you know, you got four trigger buttons and that's pretty much it. Again, it's gonna, it's gonna be releasing in December, 2021 gonna start shipping so the early the early access people or the people who reserved it first probably going to get it in December 2021 and then you're gonna start seeing people you're gonna start seeing people come 
and get it uh, later on. They're probably going to get, you know, Q1 or Q2. If you go to, if we go to the reserve, yeah, pretty much everything now is going to get Q2 2022. So probably June, probably, yeah, probably between April and June is if people reserve now, they're going to get their consoles between April and June 2022. Uh, they just have kept moving back when people will actually get their reservations. So in the morning, these were all, you know, December. And then they moved to Q1 2022. And now they're, now they're Q2 2022. So they keep getting moved back quarter by quarter. Um, so if you guys probably want to get get one of these or reserve one of these, probably want to get it sooner than later that's pretty much it just kind of wanted to show where I think this steam deck is gonna kind of line up uh, against consoles and kind of what the performance is gonna be it's probably gonna be really good because the screens only 12 1280 by 800 on the thing and that's the maximum resolution so the games are going to look really good. They're going to run really well because it's a very small screen and a high pixel density. And it'll probably be around what an Xbox One can do or a PlayStation 4 can do. All right. See ya.